Now we're going to talk about the redemption journey. The redemption journey is a particular model that is the Gullus to Geula paradigm. That means from exile to redemption paradigm. We go through the redemption journey many, many times in our lives. As with Abraham, who had one big moment where he was told, Lech Lecha, go from your father's house. And there was this big, big moment of change for him. We oftentimes in our life have a big test, whether it's loss or trauma, tragedy. We have these moments where everything shifts and we're thrust into the hardest place and we grow the most. And that is a, a mega redemption journey. But we also go on the redemption journey in micro ways all the time. So let's talk about what it is. And you'll see this on your PDF. You'll see this lay, laid out. So I want you to think of a ladder. And at the bottom of the ladder is the word victim. To be in the victim space is the moment, the time, or the feeling when you are hurt when you are, when, when everything that is sunny and shiny is no longer. It's as if you are a seed planted in the ground and now everything is dark. You just lost your job. You just got divorced. You just lost someone you love. You just got betrayed by a friend. Whatever it is that is happening, it's brutal, it's dark, it's lonely. In the victim place, and we have all been there, when the going gets the toughest, in that place, there are a few characteristics to the victim environment. Number one, it feels alone. Nobody gets it. Nobody can truly get your experience. This is by design, because this is a place where Hashem, God Himself, wants to be there for you. As I said to a client recently who was going through such a hard time, she said, I feel so far from God. I said, I know. Do you know why? Because when you feel close to God, you're making this connection. She feels connected to God. He's there, she's here, she's connected. When you are in the victim place, you're like a fish in water. The fish doesn't even know that they're in water. When you are in the victim place, you almost can't feel, can't feel that vibrant connection with God because He is holding you so close. But it doesn't feel like that. What it feels like is brutal. Every one of these levels on the ladder has its own gift. And so the gift of the victim place is A, the stripping away of the previous identity. It's brutal. It is brutal. But like the crab that has to walk soft and naked for a little while because it has outgrown its shell, that's what happens. It, when the crab gets bigger, its shell comes off. It's got to come off so that it can develop a new exoskeleton. So for a little while there, it's just naked. And it's so vulnerable. And it's so soft. But that means that it's growing. So the first most beautiful part is you have shed that old shell. It no longer fits you. And in there is the gift number two, which is that you are soft and naked. You are raw. And this rawness comes with a tremendous amount of humility. When you're in the middle of making your millions of bucks, humility is a little harder to come by. When you're walking around unemployed, or when your kid can't get into school and you're distraught, or when your children are, are not doing well and it seems like everyone else's kids are, they're not, but it seems like that. Oh, you are just, you're full of humility. You just know what it means to be soft. You're not on top of the world. And in the place of humility, you can um, both give a lot of compassion and also absorb a lot more, a lot more. You can just absorb a lot more of the lessons that Hashem wants to teach you. You'll see in our work, I'll be exchanging God, Hashem. I know you know who I mean. The Almighty, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it's all the same. Our Creator. Okay. This is the victim place. When we are in the victim place, there's no telling how long we're going to be there. But it is 
typically not a place where people come to coaching. It is usually a place where people isolate and when they do get help, they oftentimes go to therapy, which is very helpful in processing out what happened. Very, very helpful. When someone comes to you from the victim place or in the victim place in a coaching scenario, your job is to coach them by holding a space for them to process rather than having this lens of moving forward. You're still gonna hold the place of your creative, resourceful, and whole. Every, everything is a healing opportunity. But the gift that you give them is not about forward, forward. It's the gift of processing deeply the pain. Okay, that's the victim place. We've all been there. In, in biblical terms, this is when we were exiled to Egypt. Then things begin to shift. And now we have a new place called awareness. Awareness is when the little seed, it begins to poke its head above ground. And there comes a point in everyone's life, is it three years after the divorce? Is it 10 years after losing a child? Is it a year after losing a job? There's no timeline. There is no timeline. But there comes a time when hopefully a person is sick of being sick. They're tired of being tired. They are lonely from being alone. And part of this is is a godly thing where Hashem says, okay, you've been underground enough, I'm gonna send you some light. And there becomes this awareness, hmm, I wonder what I'm missing in the world. I want more, I wanna explore this more. It's kind of like a strengthening in the same way a seed decomposes and the roots are very skinny and they're very um, fragile. Well, the stem, the seedling that grew out of that, it's very strong. Still it can be trampled, it's small, but you have to understand the amount of strength that it took for it to burst through the ground. So in awareness, in a way, you have burst through the ground and suddenly you're able to look back at the situation and start to question and I wonder what there was for me to learn in this. I wonder who I am. I wonder why I'm always so exhausted. I wonder if I need to be depressed. I wonder if this is a generational pattern. I. I wonder what I was like as a kid. I wonder what it would be like to actually do what I, what I really want to do. And there starts to become this awareness. Um, and it's, a, it's an open place. And this is oftentimes when people come to coaching. They'll say, I've, I've been in therapy for 10 years, or I've done so much, or I've tried everything, and I just feel like I want something more. There's some kind of awareness inside of there. The gift of awareness is the gift of learning. And the job of a coach is to give unbelievable, compassionate, and powerful support to this awareness process. This is a time of unbelievable support. Could you imagine that this little seed finally poked its head out and now they're coming to you with all of these questions and all of these awarenesses and I finally realized this thing that I thought was normal, it's called anxiety. And I, I need to explore that, wow. You as a coach have the opportunity to give unbelievable support. And in your own life, when you, when you reach awareness, this is a very tender time. It's a very tender time and you wanna be, you wanna um, let yourself only connect with safe and loving people, safe and loving, nurturing experiences for this tender little seedling that, has, that is finally ready to emerge. So a lot of self-care, a lot of gentleness, a lot of support. We're moving up on the ladder. Next comes experience. Experience is wonderful because in the victim place, you were not coachable. You were suffering. In awareness, you're getting coached, which means you're getting support to move deeper into who you're meant to be, into what this experience was meant to show you. But now comes experience. Now you're taking action. Now you're practicing that little stem is growing and you're practicing new behaviors in your life with the help of your coach. So you're setting boundaries. You're losing weight. You're making the calls you need to, call, you need to make. You're doing acts of self-love. You are experiencing yourself in a new way in the world. And this is when people start to notice. They start to say, what are you doing? You look so happy or you look great or, or you just want to tell them about what you're doing because you're experiencing life in an entirely new way. 
and things are starting to change for you and it's moving and you're like, wow, this is, wow, I did that or this is awesome or I love my new journal or I can't believe I ever did it without his spodidus, personal prayer, like this is adding such an element to my life or wow, I finally had the guts to do that interview or I'm really writing my book, it's happening and you're experiencing this and it's like a new surge of vitality, this little plant is growing and it's you or it's your client, they're actually growing and it feels incredible. But remember, dear coach, it is still tender. It is just the beginning. And remember, dear self, who is doing all of this growth, you are still tender. You need support. You deserve support. You are a blossoming flower. You have been through so much. You have come all the way from victim. And look at you now. My gosh, you're incredible. And this is, this is the tenor of the support and the experience is to, is to, to be a champion, yes, you're doing it, as well as to acknowledge, wow, let's celebrate, look how far you've come, look what you're doing, look what you're doing, this is incredible. And now we come to the next level. The next level is called transcendence. So we have victim, awareness, experience, transcendence, transcendence. In transcendence, you have come so far on your journey that you are able to look back you automatically look back and say, wow, if that hadn't happened, I would never be here today. And I know you can all say that in your lives. If I hadn't experienced that, I wouldn't know what to say to this person. If I hadn't had that experience, I wouldn't be as compassionate. I wouldn't be as wise. I wouldn't know what to do. I would never have gotten this job. I would not know how to treat this student. If that hadn't happened, I wouldn't be who I am today. I see the hand of God in everything. I'm filled with a sense of emuna. If that guy hadn't dumped me, I would keep on falling for guys like that. And instead, I went on an entire healing journey and look where I am now and look at the kind of guy I'm looking for now or look at the kind of guy that found me now. There's so, if I hadn't gotten bullied, if I hadn't gotten bullied as a child or if I hadn't gotten betrayed, I wouldn't know how to stand up for myself. I wouldn't know how to teach my children to have a sense of self. All of this is like, wow, thank you, Hashem, for giving me these experiences. It's, it's made me who I am. And the thing about transcendence is that it doesn't mean the pain is away, but it does mean that you start to see Gosh, there's so much purpose in all of this. I really can see the hand of God. I see the purpose. Now, in every one of these levels, there are gifts to give. The gift of humility in the victim sense. The gift of, of um, presence. When you're in awareness, you're present to life. You're present to people. You're, you're standing for being awake to whatever life has. It's still very tender, but you can give a gift in friendships, even if you don't have all the answers, even if you just have awareness, your conversations are taking on a different, a different um, tone. In experience, you're full of inspiration, you're full of vitality, and you're, that's dripping out of you. You're giving that gift to people, not to mention that you're giving them the gift of compassion and understanding if they are on levels beneath you in that particular circumstance. If they are suffering in a victim place, you know because you have been there. In transcendence, you have the gift of emuna, the gift of belief, complete trust in God, and seeing, wow, wow, what you have done for me. This transcendence experience is so often what we have called the cap on everything. We say, I was hurt, but I'm glad I was hurt because look who I am today. No. There's another level, and the final level is redemption. Redemption is the full healing. Redemption is when we get in our bones that it's not that I was hurt and I have recovered. It's that this entire journey from the beginning when I was two years old and had lost my mother, this entire journey from the five-year-old divorce, all of the pain, all of the accompanying dynamics that were involved in it, all of that was exactly what I was born for. I was born to exude and to, and to be an ambassador for and to shine out a particular light of Hashem, 
a particular mission. These things are synonymous. My mission, my light of Hashem that I bring out, um, and the and the redemptive healing journey. These are all synonymous. I can finally look at my life and see it as one whole, um, one whole story, and understand that this whole story is in fact what I was born for, that there was never any mistake, and that there was a loving God there the entire time who in fact can and will heal and is healing my hurts, healing my pains, and painting them with the, the light of unbelievable, unconditional love and purpose. This is what we call geula. Geula, redemption, is when we look back on all of history and we are finally going to be able to say, now we get it. Now it all makes sense. And not only cognitively, but in our heart and in our healing. And that is what we yearn for, for every person that we speak to, that we uh, are able to support them and carry them and hold them as they go through this very arduous task. It is arduous. It is not easy of the healing journey. What will you do with this model? The first thing you'll do with this model is simply get some understanding of life and map yourself on the model. Where am I? Am I coming into awareness right now that I, I don't just want to be a victim? Even though Hashem put you in victim, we're not blaming you for being there, but am I coming into awareness now? Am I in this transcendent place where I look back, I'm like, I see the hand of God, I can't wait, I want to be, I, I want to sing His praises, I want to give this gift to others, I want to transform others. And my inexperience is coming to coaching school, for example, part of the part of my personal empowerment. Where am I on this map of growth on a macro level? And then also on a micro level, you can see this in your life where you may experience even a hurt feeling. Somebody didn't say hello to you or it seemed like somebody uh, doesn't like you suddenly. You can, you can walk yourself through the levels of, I feel like a victim, I feel hurt. I come to awareness. Oh, this is how I feel when people don't say hello to me. You know, I can experience that I have leftover insecurity. Let me go in and remember all the times, the good times that we did have together. Let me bolster my security. Let me have compassion for myself for my insecurity. And yet also notice that I can perhaps do more. I can reach back out to them. I can take a leap beyond my insecurity into trust and just see what happens if I reach out to the other person. Then I can move into experience and actually reach back out to that other person, take an action that I feel really good and proud of, even though it was incredibly scary because I felt rejected. Then I could come to transcendence and I could say, wow, Hashem, wow, God, you just took me on a journey on purpose. She didn't say hello to me so that I could find a new level of security within myself. Then, God willing, you can come to redemption, forgiving the other for the pain, forgiving Hashem for the pain, and really knowing that you as a secure person is really part of your journey on this earth. It, little microwaves, sounds like I'm saying microwave, but you understand that you can move yourself up the levels of this process. Now I'm going to tell you something honestly. When I coach people, I am not consciously thinking of this process at all. I am only and completely, God willing, with the other with the person that I'm speaking to. However, by understanding that this is the process, I am always able to, it allows me to hold on to hope and to hold on to clarity and to hold on to compassion. Sometimes we uh, tend to have compassion more for one part of the journey than the other. Oh, it's so easy for me to relate for, to people who are in victim mode because I, I just feel so bad for them. I relate to that victim. Can you be in compassion, holding, and support for the person who is in experience mode? They need you to cheer them on. They need you to show up for them fully, right? So understanding that all of these places are places where people need and deserve holding and support, even just understanding it allows me and will allow you to be there on all the levels with whatever comes up. That's first of all. Secondly, just having this awareness, just learning this model, 
can help you to kind of quietly assess where is the person now and what do I need to slightly nudge them up to the next level. So if somebody is coming to you in awareness, so you're exploring awareness, 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 and can you slightly give them some homework to move them into experience, to give them an action to do with all this awareness? Or if they're in experience, if they're taking so much action on their life, can you slightly move them into transcendence and point them in the direction of, can you see, can you see what I see, what Hashem is doing to you and through you? Slightly moving them, gently nudging them up the ladder of redemption. Okay. That, my friends, is your introduction to the Redemption School. And I am looking so forward to our very first class together. Welcome, welcome. Bye-bye.